high students. Recipe number, I think we're up to four or five by now, is a bit of a challenge recipe. So two ways to do it. For those of you who want to be extended, you're going to do it the way I'm going to show you now. And for those of you who are a bit jubilant in the kitchen and just want to take the easy way out, then you can buy your pastry. But this is for the strawberry and rhubarb tart. So first of all, I'm going to show you how to make the pastry. Remember, you only have to do this if you want to challenge yourself in the kitchen. And obviously you don't have too many assignments to do. Okay, so first of all, it's sweet short crust pastry. And what we're going to do is we're going to blind bake the pastry. I'm going to show you how to measure the ingredients first. Okay, so I've got a few things ready here before the video started. Um, I've got my cup measurement. And with the cup measurement on the one cup there, just make sure when you put the flour into the cup, so like this, give it a bit of a shake, make sure it's level on the top, and then get down and have a look. Because if you're actually looking down on top of it, it might be a different measurement. Now you can see in this case, I've got over a cup. So I need to put some of that flour back. Okay. So again, give it a tap on the bench, and if it just needs a little bit more flour added to it, you can just do it with a spoon, and get down, and then bang on. Wow, I've got a cup there. Now we need two and a quarter cups for this recipe. So in my bowl, I've got my sieve. Take one cup. Always sieve your flour. You're sieving to get out any... Um, anything that's in the flour that you don't want to actually be in your pastry. So, give that a bit of a tap because I know I'm going to need another one. Pretty much got that down pat, beautiful, straight on one cup. So I've got one hand sieving the flour and the other hand um, holding the jack. Now it's one and a quarter, and no, that's too much. So again, down, down, yep, beautiful. So into my bowl, I have got two and a quarter cups. Now you'll see that there is um, things that were in the flour that you don't really want in your pastry. Now, a sieve just needs to be tapped to get the excess um, flour off the sieve and leave it aside and I've got extra flour there for when I come to rolling it out. Now into my bowl I've got my sieved flour and into that I need to put um, my third of a cup of castor sugar. So I can use the same container to measure out my third of a cup. Doing it very, very carefully. Again, Looking down so as I can see, just a little bit too much. So, now I'm actually using raw caster sugar because I don't, I didn't have um, white caster sugar. But it doesn't matter as long as it's sweet. You can use raw caster sugar. So that goes into the flour. And into that then goes the butter, and it's 175 grams. Now you see I've got my scales here, and I've already got bits of paper ready. I'll explain what they're for in a minute. Let me take out my, make sure I put my scales on. If you put anything on the scales, if you're going to put, say for instance, that on the scales, make sure you press the tear and bring it back to zero before you put your butter in. Saves you doing the calculation. In this case, I'm just using some paper, and I need 175 grams. So, I know it's going to be a bit more than that. The reason I'm cutting it up a bit more is just to help me when I actually start to mix it all together. Oops, I've got ounces on here. Miss McKenzie, another thing to make sure that you change your ounces to grams. And we always use grams in Australia. 
that is the preferred method of measurement. Okay, <clears throat> just to reiterate, in case you've missed everything, when I just looked up at the camera and saw it gone dark, I've measured the butter, the butter's in with the flour and the sugar. I've got my tins ready for blind baking. I've got my eggs ready here. And into my eggs, I'm going to wash this so I can use it again. <clears throat> Remember, have your washing up water all ready. My hands have been washed, my apron's on, my hair's tied back. So, best way to get the egg yolk is to half your egg, half the eggshell, or one way rather, maybe not the best way, and keep tossing the egg yolk between the eggshell and get rid of all the egg white and then pop the egg yolk into a separate bowl. And remember, I don't have a scrap bowl on my bench because I do have the bin quite handy there and it's a pedal bin. Okay, you might need a scrap bowl on the bench. The other way to do it is to take half your shell, put it away, take your hand with your fingers open and ever so gently pour the yolk onto your fingers. Don't have your fingers out too wide, only wide enough for the egg white to pass through. And then you pass the egg yolk and you can actually feel the egg white going into there. And this is just the yolk that you use. Of course, you've got to have your water ready to rewash your hands. And into the bin. So I've got my egg yolk and my chilled water which is in the fridge. I'm going to stop the video now. No, I'm not. I'm going to show you how to uh, mix this. So into here, butter, sugar, flour. Hands as cold as possible. Put your hands into the bowl. Oh, it's fun. And lift up the flour, lift up all the ingredients, but get the butter between your fingers and pushing from your little finger through to your index finger. Keep dropping your hands into the bowl and keep squeezing the butter. And keep squeezing the butter until, you know, give it a good, oh, get right into there and give it um, a good rub to try and get it down to nothing. You'll see that the butter, as you squeeze it, is making smaller and smaller lumps. Okay, I've completely done my breadcrumbs or sorry, my flour, caster sugar and butter to look like breadcrumbs. I've washed my hands again. I've cleared away my chopping board because this is the bit where it all comes together. And I want to do this with my hands. The actual recipe says use the food processor and you can use the food press processor if you want to. I just prefer to do it by hand. It's sometimes just as easy. So I've got my mixture in there. To that, I add my egg yolks, as I say, in with the hands. My water's there, so the bowl goes straight into the water. And in my chilled the chilled water that we put in the fridge earlier on and I just start mixing that around just with open fingers like that. Now you'll see it starts to all come together, it starts to go a bit of a yellowish colour because of the egg yolks. Try just to get in there and give it a bit of a squeeze, a bit of a mix together. It's still very dry. Now I can feel that as I'm going along. So I'm going to need just a bit more water. That should be enough to bring the whole lot together, I hope. Oops. Any escapees, put them back in the bowl. Okay, you can see I'm only doing this with one hand. And push forward, squeeze, bring up. Again, this is only for the people who want to be extended. You don't have to go to this. You can actually just buy the pastry from Woolies and do much the same with the pastry once we get to the strawberry and rhubarb tart aspect of it. Now you can see that's all come together. I'm going to take my clean hand and just make sure. There you go, the bowl's empty. I'll leave that here just for a second. Now this is the bit where I'm just going to pop that on the bench for a minute. 
and actually I think we put this into the fridge to rest just for a while but while I'm doing that I'm going to show you how to set up your station ready for it to come out so with clean hands pick up a handful of flour as you flick your hand across the bench open your index finger can you see that that's put some flour onto the bench just a dusting okay, put the excess back in the bowl make sure you've got your rolling pin ready to go and then when it comes out of the fridge it's just a case of rolling it but the pastry needs to rest for a little while so actually I'm going to put it back into the bowl I'm going to cover it with a clean tea towel you can cover it with cling film if you want and then I'm going to put it into the fridge to rest and I'll pop that in the fridge it says probably about anything between 15 and 30 minutes okay my pastry's had time in the fridge and I've now put some flour just on the top of the pastry it's forward back and lift okay and then you turn the pastry around again I'm flicking with my index finger as I showed you before just to give a light dusting of flour on top of your work, working surface I also like to push in the edges you can see it's going all quite um, I don't know like torn I suppose is the word for it around the edges and I just don't want to again my pastry is quite soft so it's quite easy to um, roll out and I just need to make sure that I roll it out uh, to cover six of the pastry cases I'm sure I've got plenty pastry and as I said you can do it using just one if you wish one uh, container round pie dish to do this okay but I'm using these so what I'm going to do is just put them I might just feels just that little bit thick whoops just going to roll it out just a bit more and then take my knife and just gently maybe about a couple of millimeters around the edge just going to cut the shape of now you can if you wish spray these and that's exactly what I'm going to do just to make sure they don't stick remember to spray over the sink that into our pastry cases ever so gentle now there's one what you want to do to stop the pastry rising this is going to be quite thick pastry but to stop it rising you need to prick the base of the pastry with the fork that allows the steam to escape so I'll do them all at once but I'll cut this part of the video out when I'm doing all the rest. So you take your pre-prepared paper, pop it inside, and then take some rice and just put the rice into the base of the pastry case. Just like that. Now what that does is it keeps the pastry from rising in the middle when you put it in the oven. The weight of the rice will keep that and try not to get any rice into your pastry. Okay, 
So now, look, I've got a couple of bits in there already. Now I'm going to go round all my not wasting any. Of course, I've got plenty left, so I might make one bigger one with the pastry than I've got left. And just cutting around. And that goes into the oven for about 10 minutes to bake it blind. It, after the 10 minutes it comes out, you get rid of the rice. You can keep it for the next time you do some blind baking. Throw away the papers. Then you fill the tarts with whatever filling we're doing, as I said, the strawberry and rhubarb. And then you pop it back in the oven to complete the process for about another 10 to 15 minutes. So, in you go. And I'll put my timer on. It doesn't matter if you only do it for 9 minutes or... 11 minutes or 12 minutes, just as long as you don't cook it too much and because you know it's going to go back into the oven again. I'll come back with that finished and something else. Okay. I'm just got the pastries out of the oven, so they're half cooked. Okay, because we've still got to put the strawberry and rhubarb into the middle of that. So I'm just going to pop that tray aside. That's the tray that I was cooking. Now remember I had quite a bit of pastry left over. So what I did, I just got this out of the oven. Just to be very careful, make sure you use the oven gloves, guys. You can pick up your paper and get rid of your rice. Remember to keep the rice for any other blind baking you're doing and throw away the paper, just throw that away. Now I've just looked at my pastry and you can see that it's still a bit wet in the middle, but the rice managed to hold it down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it back into the oven. Whoops, I'm trying to do this so as you can see it. I'm gonna put it back in the oven just for probably about another five minutes. That should, oh, that's the temperature I'm putting up. Oh, Miss McKenzie, it's the timer we want. So just another five minutes and that should just dry out the rest of that. Now remember the pastry is not fully cooked, it's only partially cooked, okay? So it's ready for the filling. Today's recipe, students, is the strawberry and rhubarb tart. Now if you've just watched the other video of making the short crust pastry, I've still got the pastry cases over there. Remember I made one batch of the sugar crust, or the sweet short crust pastry. So I had enough for one large tart and six small ones. So if you use the recipe of taste, remember to half it if you only want to do a few. However, I could only buy rhubarb in this amount. So this is rhubarb. This is what we are looking at in our agricultural unit. Now, how you prepare the rhubarb, and I've started to do this already because I had so much um, rhubarb and I just want to use it all. I need to cut it all probably enough for my recipes but anyway it does boil down make sure you wash your rhubarb make sure you take the ends of the rhubarb probably about that much that's not good you don't want that and of course the green leaves as well there's nothing really you can use those for except for maybe decoration on the table when you're going to present your tart remember you have to present your tart with some nice sort of garnish so as I've said I've washed this now the rhubarb also can be quite green. If it is, that means it's going to be just that little bit sour. Sour being, you know, when you put it in your mouth and go, mmm, it's not really that sweet. So just bear in mind, this recipe calls, oh, I don't like that, but this recipe calls for half a cup of diced rhubarb. As I could only buy it in that big bunch, I may as well use it all. That's hence the reason I did both tarts. So my recipe will be so much more than you're required to do just bear that in mind but that's all really if you're going to um going to the shops and you can buy rhubarb in just in the stocks and you, maybe three stocks would be plenty as i say i'm going to put that all in there and into that we need some 
sugar. It's three tablespoons of sugar to taste. So I'll just get my sugar out. Now, when you're measuring, remember I've got three, so I've doubled the recipe. So I'm going to need six. So make sure when you're measuring or using the measuring spoons that you don't pile it right up. It should just be straight across. That's one, two and three. And I need another three because I've doubled my recipe, remember? And I'm putting in just that little bit more because that rhubarb looks very green. So sugar into there. Also into there. It all goes in together. So... I've, I'm using a uh, fresh lemon, but you can use lemon squeeze if you've got that at home. And that's half a teaspoon, half a teaspoon, is that half a tablespoon? Half a tablespoon. So I want a full tablespoon. And again, just going to put that bit more in there. And take a full half lemon. Make sure you don't get any of the lemon pips in there. Shake it around to get rid of those pips out the way, pips. Beautiful. Okay, so I've got my lemon. Now I need my corn flour or corn starch. So I'm using this corn starch and it asks for a tablespoon. So a tapioca you can use as well. Now because I'm using the same tablespoon, I'm washing it because I've had the lemon juice in there. And I'm drying it. Don't put anything wet into a dry packet. Okay? Now what I need for this as well is a knife. Because how you measure is you put your tablespoon. Now you can see that this has got such a lot on there. So you take your knife and using the back of the knife, you square it up like that. That way, that's a complete measurement. If you were to use it the other way when I first got it out of the packet, that could be up to three tablespoons all piled up there. So I need to put that in there again because I'm doubling my recipe. In fact, I'm just going to put a little bit more in that one because experience tells me I need it. Sometimes experience helps. So into there I'm going to mix this. Now generally, if you are using the uh, if you're using bought pastry, then this is when you would get your frozen pastry out and start to play with your frozen pastry. And you can actually do parcels with this. You can do a galette, you can do an open one. I mix all that round. Now I've got to leave that for 30 minutes to macerate which basically means for all those flavors and the juices or the lemon juice to go into the rhubarb and for the sugar to to do its bit as well and to sweeten that up so i'll come back with that in 30 minutes okay i've got my tart shells here my Rhubarb and strawberries, and in fact, I've put some raspberries and blueberries in there as well. Please be creative, guys, whenever you're making this. I want to see what it is you can do. And remember, for those of you who have um, been getting marks of 100% and you know who you are, I'd really like to see you try to make the pastry. You've been doing such a good job with the cooking that I'd really love to see you extend your skills. Um, so you can see how much I'm putting into each one. And my oven's still on, waiting. So hopefully these are going to be really nice. I'm 10 serving these. Or maybe with some creme fraiche or to make them just that little bit healthy some lemon yogurt so i think i've got enough in each one of those oh, a little bit more in that one and then of course just with everything that was left i did my rather large 
part over here. <coughs> Might not have enough for that. Hope I do. Yeah, it's going to be fine. I'm making sure that I'm not wasting any ingredients. And then, of course, <gasps> my mouth's watering already. Those get put back into the oven for maybe another 10 minutes and you will actually see that the edges of the tarts should then start to be quite brown so back into the oven oops don't want it to go that far i want to be able to get it out i'm putting my timer on again um, I'm going to put it on for 10 minutes, but I will be checking it after probably about 7 minutes. Strawberry and rhubarb tarts are ready. As you can see, they're still a bit hot, so I can't lift it up. I'll um, use the oven gloves. You can see the individual tarts with the rhubarb. And that was the, the large one that I made. Possibly could have had a bit more fruit in that one if I had any more, but that's enough. I've taken one and I've put it into my uh, dish and I've got my lemon yogurt that go and I'm serving it with. Here you go, that's a strawberry and rhubarb tart. Just a point to note, guys, you can see I've cleaned up the kitchen. I started with a tidy kitchen, I finished with a tidy kitchen. I hope you really enjoy the strawberry and rhubarb tart. Now remember, if you don't want to be extended, you can buy the pastry from the shop, shortgrass pastry. You can even use some of the puff pastry that was left over from the tomato and onion tart that you will be doing. Um, and for those of you who have got 100 out of 100, I would like you really to extend yourself by trying to make the pastry please as you can see a bit more time consuming but a lot more rewarding enjoy <laughs>